Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. There's a, a bush that's cultivated in Israel. It does also grow in the wild, but it's cultivated as well. The seeds from this plant are very small, about one to two millimetres in diameter. And they were so small that they were used to indicate the, the smallest measurement in ancient Israel. This uh, tree or bush grows to about two metres tall and spreads out quite wide. It's a great refuge for birds. This is the mustard seed and mustard tree that Jesus is referring to in one of today's parables. Jesus describes the kingdom of heaven uh, as a mustard seed that grows into a tree in which birds find refuge. Jesus often uses metaphors and short stories, which we refer to as parables. And today we hear the last five of seven parables that we've heard over the last three weeks, all of them describing the kingdom of heaven. The great thing about metaphors, stories and parables is that they're usually easy to remember and they often convey far more meaning than any other means of communication. Take the mustard seed, for example. First in your imagination, look at the seed. Pretend it's in your hand. Can you see the tiny round seed? It's so small that if you dropped it on the ground, you'd probably lose it. The seed is small and it does seem insignificant. But like all seeds, it's also strong and resilient. It contains everything it needs to germinate and to grow into a tree. Now imagine the fully grown tree or shrub, millions of times bigger than the seed. The birds sitting in the shade of its branches. So what could this parable mean? Well, the seed could be the word of God that's sown throughout the world. The word can seem very insignificant and small, but it contains everything that people need for faith to grow. And in time, more and more people come to faith through the word and the kingdom of heaven grows and grows. Or perhaps the seed is Jesus who died on the cross and like a seed was buried. He seemed to be an insignificant person, a blip in history. But three days later, he rose from the dead as victorious king of the universe. Well, maybe the seed, mustard seed is a sign of hope. A sign of hope that even though our culture tells us that faith in Christ is insignificant or even on the way out, like the mustard seed, it's still strong and resilient, just waiting for the right time to germinate and grow into a tree. And now let's, in our mind's eye, look at the grown mustard tree, full of birds finding refuge. In the Old Testament, the birds of the air symbolise the people of the nations who live under oppression. The mustard tree could remind us that Jesus came for the people of all nations and his kingdom is a place of refuge and safety for all people. The mustard tree may also remind us of what Jesus said about worry when he refers to the birds of the air that God takes care of. And therefore, we should not worry because we're worth far more than the birds. And finally, the, the mustard seed is the third parable in a series of seven parables in chapter 13 of Matthew that all include someone who plants seed. A farmer sows seed on land with various types of soil. A man sows good seed and his enemy comes at night and sows weeds amongst the wheat. And a man sows the mustard seed. And Jesus explains that the man who sowed the good seed is the son of man. Perhaps the sower in all three cases is Jesus, the son of man. This could remind us that Jesus is not just the author of our faith, 
but it also sustains our faith and takes care of the people in his kingdom. Really, when you think about it, the, the parables are a gift, the parables of Jesus. They're stories and metaphors and symbols that help us to learn and understand and remember. And they're most helpful to us when we spend time meditating on them. And as you meditate, let your imagination go. But don't stop there. Our imagination can give us new insight, but it can also easily lead us astray into false insights. And so after you've meditated on a particular parable, it's always good to test your conclusions against the rest of God's word. In the case of the seven parables in chapter 13 of Matthew, well, when you're reading one and you get insights from one, it's good to read the others and, and see how they inform those insights and whether they sound like they're true. It's good to test your conclusions against not just those parables, but also against the rest of God's word to see what God has to say about those symbols and those word pictures in the rest of the Old and New Testaments. There's one more thing that's important to consider when you're trying to understand a parable. In the parables in Matthew 13, remember they're all about the kingdom of heaven and about what the kingdom and what the king does and offers. Quite often there's a tendency for us to read God's word looking for the things that we have to do to get into God's good graces instead of remembering that God's grace is a gift. These parables about are about what God does for us. So today we have five parables, five gifts from Jesus, each filled with rich images of the kingdom of heaven. Five parables to grow our understanding of God's kingdom and our understanding of Jesus the King. There's really not enough time in one sermon to give justice to these parables. Rather, I'd like to encourage you to spend some time this week reading them and thinking about them. Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field and like a pearl of great value. This treasure is hidden in God's word, waiting for you to discover it. Each time you read God's word, you will find more treasure. Some will be old treasure that you've already found before, and some will be new treasure, new insights, new understanding. It will help your faith to grow like a tiny seed growing into a tree. Each time you meditate on God's word, you'll be like the owner of of a house who brings out of the storeroom new treasures as well as old. And who knows what new and old treasures you will find as you do read God's word. Amen.